Uh, the story of Sage is just so amazing. It's a story of how you and George, um, together with a very small investment, um, started a, a publishing company that now has over a thousand employees across several continents, a worldwide um, a distribution network, um, and having this great impact. I know people don't all know the story of how Sage got started. So a little brief kind of story going to the first couple of journals. Sage was started in 1965 and um, I'd had two other jobs in publishing in New York and in Oxford, England. And we had um, $500 in capital. Half of that was the valuation of a, a used air conditioner. <laughs> I really felt that I didn't have anything to lose and a lot to gain. My dad's side of the family had a lot of people who had their own businesses, however small. And so um, I, I sort of hung out my shingle and I was a consultant to other small publishers, including the publisher of the American Behavioral Scientist, wound up shortly after launching Sage with Urban Affairs Quarterly and Marilyn Gattel, the founding editor, but um, she was lamenting the fact that there was no one because City University of New York at that time did not have, and I think still does not have, a university press. There was no one to publish a journal she wanted to launch in Urban Affairs. And so I said, Perhaps it was the scotch playing a bit of an influence. <laughs> but I said, I am a corporation and I will publish your journal. And so nine months after that, Urban Affairs Quarterly was born with enough subscribers to pay the printers. And who did all that work to get? Marilyn um, in her spare time and me in my spare time when I wasn't consulting with other small teeny weeny publishers. In the end, we just felt we owed it to our authors and our editors to grow the company, to be able to do more each year, to be able to do it better, and to be able to do things that perhaps in the mid-60s were viewed as a little risky, including interdisciplinary publishing. What role did um, having American behavioral scientists come on board um, have for the interdisciplinary vision of, of SAGE? Well, the American behavioral scientist um, was actually an early stage publication in that um, we took on responsibility for it about two months after Urban Affairs Quarterly was launched. And it was a tremendous calling card. A journal, the founding editor of that journal used to say, a journal is the greatest calling card in the world. And because ABS is interdisciplinary, it gave us the opportunity to talk to people in different fields, encourage them to do a special issue, market that issue, see if there was a solid niche there, and then launch a journal or a book series or both in those fields. And so we did that in numerous other fields, including the Journal of Black Studies, Malibu, and I might, I might communication. Let I mean, <laughs> you know, you name it, and it was born out of either those relationships, right. editorial board members, etc., or friendships that we were enabled to make in those days. This whole range of perspectives that, that, that Sage nurtured and understood where the divisions were and what the, the, the diversity was. I don't think there was anybody um, anywhere who understood methodological diversity and eclecticism the way that Sarah and George did and actually had a vision of the entire methodological panorama. We were all in our narrow boxes and arguing our own methods and procedures and I don't think anybody had the big picture the way that they did. Knew where the gaps were, knew where the directions were, knew what needed to be done and again willing to do the cutting edge and beyond. Myself and uh, two colleagues, uh, we decided what America needed was the Journal of Urban History. Uh, and uh, we wanted to do a few things that hadn't been done before. First of all, our interest was more in the urban than in the history. What I mean by that is that uh, we wanted to look at the urban process from an interdisciplinary uh, perspective. 
Uh, and secondly, we wanted to do a journal, uh, we wanted to do things in a journal uh, that had never been done before. Uh, photographic essays, uh, because uh, urban history is a very visual field. Uh, we wanted to do interviews with leading practitioners uh, in the field so uh, others could benefit from their wisdom uh, over the years. Uh, and we wanted to do certain types of review essays which would bring literature from a diverse background uh, to uh, the um, attention of our readers. And uh, we wondered what publisher would be interested in uh, all those uh, interesting and perhaps crazy ideas. Uh, and we were all avid readers of Urban Affairs Quarterly. And we thought, well, you know, uh, maybe Sage would be a, a likely uh, place uh, for us. Uh, and sure enough, uh, uh, Sarah uh, was very encouraging. Uh, she allowed us to run with it. It was clear from, from Sarah that th this was not uh, merely a business. Uh, this was a love, a, a passion, an obsession. But the focus was on Sarah's vision. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah's vision uh, not only for the Journal of Urban History, uh, but for SAGE, and, and that was the dynamic, uh, that was the motivator that we had. And we came, uh, we came away from that meeting so charged uh, that uh, we, we vowed to each other uh, that uh, we would turn the Journal of Urban History uh, not only to leading journal in the field of urban history, but we would make the field uh, of urban history. We would, uh, we would forge the field uh, of urban history together uh, with SAGE. And uh, they allowed us to do that. I remember this incredible argument that I got into with, with George and with Sarah, who both wanted to know what the social problem was that the research was going to address and how the research that we were doing in media and children could be put to work and put to use by the public policy makers. And that's the other hallmark. They were able to pick up young people and encourage them and engage them and they were able to help develop a field of communication that is problem oriented and socially action oriented. I think it's one of the hallmarks of the line of research that's been published by SAGE is that the, the researchers have been addressing social problems by the studies that they do. This is one of the things that I wanted to say today that there was such a charisma of risk taking that she had that was so incredible that she was a visionary in the sense of being able to see the value of this. It was SAGE that really made uh, the research, the sustained uh, analytical uh, discourse about uh, African and African-American phenomena uh, legitimate as a social science mm -hmm. and an interdisciplinary field. And I just want to say just to, to Sarah, you are absolutely fantastic and marvelous. And the hope that you had uh, really combined with the hopes that we had, and you have brought all of that to reality. And the reality we, we see is the results of the, the journal. Um, I was just talking earlier with uh, the people from JBS who are here, and, and you guys are great, uh, that uh, the journal has really, it really ranks very high in the field of ethnic studies. And we're really grateful for you and your vision. And, and out of that, of course, came many other involvements that I've had with SAGE, including the working with Roth in the encyclopedias. So thank you so much.